of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, blessing of this holy water. Lord God, you beautify your church with the rich variety of the virtues of your saints. Show your kindness to us, who with devotion wish to use this water for you, uh, of your grant that we may be filled with the love of your commandments and sustained by the help they need in this present life, they may progress towards the goal of life everlasting. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent, and now we've prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following his footsteps, so that being made by his grace protectors of the cross, we may share also in the resurrection and his life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, and we who follow the Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, cause our Saviour to take flesh and submit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed this lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. <coughs> First reading, a reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of, of those who, to, who are taught that I may know how to sustain with a word him that is weary. Morning by morning he, he wakens, he wakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. He turned not backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheek to those who pulled out my beard. I hid not my face from shame and spitting, for the Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been confounded. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks Response to the Son My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? All who see me deride me, they curl their lips, they toss their heads. He trusted in the he trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him, for in him he delights. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For dogs have surrounded me, 
a band of wicked besets me. They tear holes in my hand and my feet. I can count every one of my bones. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. But you, O Lord, do not stay afar off. My strength, make haste to help me. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. I will tell of your name to my king and praise you in the midst of the assembly. You who fear the Lord, give him praise. All descendants of Jacob, give him glory. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be trust, but entered himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every time confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. And that's the Lord. Glory and praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. Christ became obedient for us unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. At that time, one of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that moment, he sought an opportunity to betray him. Now, on the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Where will you have us prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to sit to one and say to him, The teacher says, My time is at hand, I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he sat at table with the twelve disciples, and as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him one after another, Is it I, Lord? And he answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish we will betray him. The Son of Man goes as is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Is it I, Master? He said to him, He would have said so. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take this, take eat, and this is my body. And he took a chalice, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, 
which is prepared for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I shall not drink it again of this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it in you, with you, in your, my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to Mount of to the Mount of Olive. Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I shall strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the, the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter declared, Though they all fall, Though they all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. <laughs> then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. And taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is very sorrowful even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little further, he fell on his face and prayed. My father, if it be possible, let this chalice pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, So, could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed. My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, you will be done. And again, he began to found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the words, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, I was still sleeping and taking a rest. Behold, that the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going, my betrayal is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs, for the chief priests and the elders of, and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I should kiss is the man says him. And he, and he came to Jesus, to Jesus at once and said, Hey, Master. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, And why are you here? Then he came up and laid hands on Jesus and says to him. Then they came, they came up and laid hands on Jesus and says to him. And behold, one of those who were with Jesus stretched out his hands and drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your servant back in its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then? Should the scriptures be fulfilled, that it must be so. At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out against robber with swords and cups to capture me? Day after day I sat in the temple teaching, and it did not see me. But all this has taken place, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then those who had saved Jesus led him to Cephas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter followed him at a distance, as far off, as far off, as far off the county uh, courtyard of the high priest. And going inside, he sat with the guards to see the end. Now the chief priest and the whole council sought false testimony against Jesus that they might put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At least two came forward and said, 
These fellows say, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to give it in three days. And the high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus was silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God, tell us if you are Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so. But I tell you, after you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, he has uttered blasphemy. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered. He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside the courtyard, and a maid came up to him and said, You also were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it before them all, saying, I do not know what you mean. And when he went out to the porch, another maid saw him and said, and she said to the bystanders, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And he began, and again he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are one of the men, one of them, for you, your accent betrays you. Then he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately the cock crowed, the cock crowed, and Peter remembered the saying of Jesus, Before the cock crows, you deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him and the pilot the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that he was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have seen in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed and went and hung himself. But the chief priest, taking the pieces of silver, said, it is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. So they took counsel and brought with them the potter's field to bury, to bury strangers in. Therefore the field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was filled what had been spoken by the prophet Jeremiah, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the price, of him on whom a price had been set by some of the sons of Israel, and they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord as the Lord directed him. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You have said so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they testify against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single child, so that the governor wondered greatly. Now at the feast, of, at, now at the, feast the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then an oldest prisoner called Barnabas. So, when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent a word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much over him today in the dream. 
Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the people to ask for Barnabas and they destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barnabas. Pilate said to, to them, Then what should I do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Yeah, they said, Why, what evil has he done? But they all, they, they shouted all the more. Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this righteous man's blood. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he blessed for them Barabbas, and having scolded Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe upon him. And plating a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spat upon him, and took the reed, and struck him on the head. And when they mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him, and led him away to crucify him. And they were much, as they were marching out, they came upon a man of Siren, Samuel by name. The man they, they compelled to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the star, they offered him wine to drink, mingled with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among themselves, among them by casting lots, and they sat down and kept to watch over him. And over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is the king of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. And they and those who passed by divided him, wagging their heads, saying, you who, you who will destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, if you are the Son of Man, come down from the cross. So also the chief priest and with the scribes and elders mocked him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trust in God. Let God deliver him now, if he desires him. For he said, I am the Son of God. And the robbers who, who were crucified with him also revived him in the same way. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, son, lama, lama, sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And they and Jesus cried out with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn into two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had 
fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to him. When the centurion and those who were with him, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquakes and what took place, they were filled with hope and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. The, there were also many women there looking on from afar, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him, among whom were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also was a disciple of Jesus. He, was, he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. The, then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a thin linen shroud and laid it in his in and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had built in the rock. And he rolled a great stone at the door of the tomb and departed. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember how the imposter said, when he was still alive, after three days I rise again, therefore order the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Let his disciples go and steal him away and tell the people he has risen from the dead, and the last fraud will be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, You have a guard of soldiers, go, make it secure as you can. So they went out and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone and setting a guard. And dear people of God, today we have the account of the Passion by Saint Matthew. Matthew was a real Jew. Uh, he was one of the people. And so we have it from one of the witnesses, one of the real witnesses to what happened. And when we look at this one, we see that they were the Passover was celebrated first. This was a great feast commemorating the liberation. The liberation of the Jews from Egypt. And uh, this commemoration was done each year. And so they were doing it. But during it, Jesus says a strange thing. This is my body and this is my blood. In other words, she was preparing for the fact that he was going to be sacrificed in order that the truth of his words would be known. And then you have him going out into the garden to pray, but to pray earnestly. And he asked others to pray with him. And Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. But they were sleepy. And how often in life that is this so? We are determined to pray, but we are too sleepy to do it. Too bothered about other things. Too distracted by the ways of the world. So that is the first lesson we learn is that when we pray, we have to be conscious that we pray to God 
the Almighty Father. It's many times that our prayers say, but they don't mean anything. But here we are reminded that prayers must mean something and find a meaning in the words and in the thoughts and even in the works that we do. So that when you give charity, you give charity from your heart. When you speak, you are speaking from your heart. And above all, when you're thinking, that you are thinking about your acceptance of the Word of God. And then we have Judas coming, the symbol of love which, between people, giving of a kiss which we kiss of betrayal. And uh, Judas had worked out that he was getting money. And how often in the world has money dominated? How often in the world even today that we have, it is hard to know which the people are worried about the economic side of the virus that is plaguing the world at the moment, or the physical side, or the lack of, of um, the current setting for people. People forget. People forget. So we are reminded again to be thoughtful of others. And they, they came out. And they came out with clubs and they came out against the great commandments that we have from Jesus Christ to love God and to love our neighbors. And then we have the one thing which is repeated and this passage. And as you know, even in the world throughout the whole world, the, the idea of spitting at the person is the most awful thing you can do. And even now, as we suffer from this virus, the idea that our spittle are the we when we sneeze or cough that we should not be a danger to other people. Therefore we have to follow the instructions of those people whom we know. But spitting on a person recently when a, a government minister of the country was spat on because he was trying to get the people to quarantine. He was trying to do his best, but this is what they thought of. So we come also to look from the point of view of Peter. Peter, who was the chief of the apostles, who said, hey, if the others are run away, I'll stay around. But he denied him three times. I don't know the man. And he crossed, and he brought a curse on his own head. I do not know him. And very often we bring the curse on our own head by knowing what we should do by not doing it. And so they brought him to to Caiaphas. And this is a lesson to us is what is religion? What is religion? It must be what we feel in our hearts, not judging other people but to listening and helping them to understand the message of Christ. 
that uh, there are very many many gospels prophets there are very many many anti prophets in the world but our leader our head our hope is jesus christ himself and then pilate as jesus is the king but what pilate was worried about was his own position and jesus was going to be a problem to him and that is why he asked are you a king and jesus said you said and then we have also the reaction of the people themselves the mob and this mob instinct is present even today very often we hear people being killed by a mob because did we do not think so we have to think before we work and then there is the choice between good and evil between barabbas and jesus and they chose barabbas very often people choose in the world the way of the devil and he came up to be crucified and they mocked him and they spat at him and put a crown of thorns on his head he humiliated him to shame him and when they couldn't think of anything else they laid him out to be crucified and even the two robbers with him joined in more than likely in order to get a retreat from the crowd that you both said it and get and then we have the last saying my god my god why have you forsaken me the words of jesus brother were proved by his resurrection but to the world he was dead to the world he meant nothing and he, jesus gives up his spirit and then the important thing from matthew was the curtain of the temple was torn in two the curtain which hid the holy of holies and it is a symbol of the opening of the gates of heaven which had been closed by the sins of humanity and now we have the chance through jesus christ to jesus christ to enter heaven again and even the centurion who was a roman who didn't exactly believe in anything especially with regard to the jews says this surely was to be the son of god and there we have then the women joseph of arimathea and come and take the body and find out what is made but where the jews were not satisfied they had their doubts the same as everybody has their doubts and even though they say that they are not christian even though they say that they don't believe in god even though they go through life as if they don't do so that in the final hours of their life they believe and so to be sure that 
Jesus did not cheat. They sent the soldiers to look after the grave. So there are certain people in this story who are important, we can see ourselves in it. We can see Judas as a betrayer. We also betray God when we sin. We can see Peter, who in his own way was a betrayer, a bigger betrayer than Judas, because he pretended. And we have so many people who pretend. And then we have another pretender in Pilate. Or before we come to Pilate, we have uh, Caiaphas, who knew as the chief priest what should be done with anybody, but was quite prepared when his own position was in danger to uh, punish Jesus. Another betrayer. And finally, we have Pilate, who, by washing his hands, was betraying Jesus. He felt that by washing his hands, he was going to uh, take away his guilt. So, we also today have been told to wash our hands in order to help our neighbor. We do it in a genuine way by doing it as it is promised. And so the words of the life of Jesus are ours. And we who claim to be Christians should remember the great sacrifice which Jesus made for us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, was substantially the Father. Through him all things were made, and the husband of the creation. And the Holy Spirit was in charge of the work in their age and became that. For our sake, he was crucified at the Pontius Pilate. He it suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and received the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory, without the living of the dead, and the sin of the dying of the I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of Life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to God our Father for this is this Passion Sunday. Let us pray first of all that we will reform ourselves and not betray Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray also 